if I recall correctly, protect the wild. Zoo has a slight edge in that matchup, unless it's like an explosive trap build. Yeah. Now the difference there is that since then, like Imp Gang boss has been added to the format. This is like how long it's been. It's like Imp Gang boss has rotated into the format somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure exactly how much pressure they can get out versus a hunter and really and really try to apply to them. And at the same time, most of the hunters have swapped over to a freezing trap style of play where they want to seize tempo, get a piloted treader on board and then take advantage of the fact that they can get initiative for pretty cheap. Yeah. So, you know, we, we see that right now it looks like a pretty typical hunter build, but we've also seen, wow, that's a flare in there. We've also seen, you know, Ram Wrangler builds. Uh, we've seen people dedicated to super high end game of, uh, of hunters in this event. Well, that looks like a mid range hunter. Yeah, I would venture to say so as well. The flare, uh, you know, equipped in here to make sure they can try to check a mysterious challenger turns a little bit better. In my experience, that's still not a very effective way to fight it, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Yeah. But their curve is so strong at the moment. Mad Scientist in the Piloted Treader is about one of the best starts you're going to get. You know, maybe they look at this hand and they go, Web Spinner Flare is the play here, um, but my sight's set on that Piloted Treader. Yeah, but uh, look at Worcester. They have a really solid curve as well uh, with, the, you know, that turn two wild growth in the turn three shredder, and they're gonna be able to innovate out the turn four Ancient of Lore, if they so choose, to sort of refill that hand that they used on ramp early on in the game. Yeah, I think a lot of this is gonna depend on what they see from Ohio State. You know, they, they even have options to, for removal in their hand very yeah. early on too. Yeah, wow. Leox a great role in this position, I think. Yeah, but you look at it, you're like, well, that means he's going to proc the freezing trap with whatever comes out of the pilot shredder. Sure, but you've taken care of a pilot shredder with just a mad scientist. Not a bad deal. We actually don't know for sure that that's freezing trap. That's we, true as well. We did see freezing trap uh, was drawn early on. Okay, well, it is freezing trap. Okay. We now know for sure it's freezing trap. We now know for sure that's freezing trap. But a super strong follow-up to this one. You know, they can challenge this board in a number of ways. Wooster, really with all the options in Ohio State, going to have to just rely on their curve to get the job done in the meantime. Yeah, which is a tough thing to do. Uh, even though Liak is great when you already have a board presence, uh, when it's just kind of sitting there on an empty board, it's... He's lonely. He's, he's very lonely. <laughs> he's like shouting for his bros, come on! Yeah. Pirate, Pirate Druid. Druid. <laughs> That's very poor penmanship. Few people know that... Uh, that TJ is also one of the few penmans in the world under the apprenticeship of uh, the youngest remaining one alive at 73 years old. <laughs> <laughs> the art of calligraphy. I watched a documentary about that the other day, dude. I don't even know why There's I watched it. There's a whole it. documentary about the art of calligraphy. Uh, it was penmanship. There's only a few of them left in the world. It's like yeah. a dying art. It's actually pretty cool. Well, Trog says he's no stupid, but he dies to just a wrath. Yeah. That sounds pretty stupid to me. <laughs> Wooster takes initiative is the is the big thing here, though. And Ohio State, yeah, they do have things to play, but when you fall behind against a Druid or a Hunter, it's really tough for you to come back in it. Now, one of the cards that can climb you back in it is Eagle Horn Bow. You know, when you're still fighting and, and all the minions are kind of in combat, uh, this provides you just that little bit of leverage that maybe you can use to get back in the game. Ooh. Yeah, and they, they are curving out into a Dr. Boom next turn. So... If that Dr. Boom can stick and, you know, they can do some work with that, uh, get some base damage in. Right now, they haven't done a single point of damage to Worcester. Yeah, which is part of the big story here. I mean, Hunter does have to leverage uh, its advantage at some point, and usually does that via damage. In this situation, that damage is not anywhere in sight. And Worcester, with, again, now they're starting to build up even more options at this point. So Dr. Boom is going to have to carry a lot of weight in this situation. With Azure Drake and Swipe, I don't know if they can get this done. So the question here now to me is, do they use this Eagle Horn Bow to take out this 5-5, or do they want to start pressuring right away? Uh, that 5-5 can be pretty threatening, especially since they're they're actually pretty low. They attack into this 5-5, all of a sudden they're down to 16 health. So that's a lot of damage that Ohio State's taken early on in the game, and um, they realize that Dr. Boom. Boom is going to be their most powerful threat. They have to hope that Worcester is another BGH, which they don't. And the quality of hand for Worcester is actually not that great. Yeah, they can swipe, but in order to take out the... Well, they can swipe 
uh, then Savage Combatant, and then Hero Power, but they're taking a lot of damage in that case. Yeah, that, well, that's the benefit of being at such a high life total, is that the damage when your opponent's got this few cards can oftentimes be inconsequential. So yeah, dealt five damage, which is the average about for Boom Bots. Uh, they go to 19, but they clear the Dr. Boom off the board. They have initiative at the moment, uh, or the, rather they have the board presence at the moment. In Ohio State, at 15 life, and with this few resources, where do they go? They need a big draw right here. That's a big draw. Yeah, it certainly is. Now, here's the thing that is being contested uh, by the Savage Combatant. So what's the follow-up for Wooster? I mean, we've we've been seeing them fight for the board now for seven turns. This is, this is pretty darn rare. Mm -hmm. Usually, you see someone with an advantage and the other guy fighting from behind, but so far, they've been going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, so let's say they play the Savannah High Main here, along with something like the Web Spinner. Wooster can Something like the Web Spinner, as opposed to something like... The Unleash the Hounds. Yeah. Yeah, let's say they play something like Savannah Jaime with the web spinner. <laughs> the something like was slightly late. I just wanted to call you out. I'm a, I'm a jerk. I'm sorry. I'm so sad. <laughs> Someone give me a horse pass. They're going to choose a flare. I am shocked by that. Say they play something like the flare with their top deck card, I am be gallon web spinner. Yeah. Say they play something like the Iron Bee Gowl. I got gotcha. you. That, that's it. That's the end. I'm following. Okay. <laughs> well, Darnassus Aspirate's not that great of a draw this late in the game. Uh, let's see what they pick up from the Azure Drake. It is going to be a big game it's hunter. a little bit late. Yeah. It took but, a little bit too much time hiding out in the woods. Yeah. Lining up his mark. But Worcester can, uh, they have plenty of health to work with. They have plenty of damage to work with, too. Ohio State has to take care of the damage side of things. And this is why I'm kind of shocked they didn't play the Savannah High Main. It's because now the Savage Combatant's free to just attack your face. Yeah. When you're at 15, 5 damage is a ton of damage. When you're at 35 damage is a ton of damage. At all stages in the game, we can <laughs> confidently conclude that 5 damage is a lot of damage. <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> That's ineffective at the moment! <laughs> Web Spinner uses King Crush attack. <laughs> it's ineffective. <laughs> well, it could be effective next turn, but they still, even with the King Crush draw, are in a poor position in this game. And even just something like a Savage Roar draw will end the game. Or Swipe. Yeah, they need four points of damage. That's it. They actually only need three because they have the hero power. Yeah. They don't have access to it this turn, though, so the fight continues. Here's the thing. Is Wooster ever worried about damage output from Ohio State? Right now they have five on board, so unless they had double kill command and they left a beast around, they're still in a fantastic position That's with this swipe. game. And they go, for, they go for the dig here, and they find that swipe. We are going to game number five.